Hi, I'm Dylan, and today we're going to meet Nathan Carnage Corbett. He's an 11 times world Muay Thai champion, and for over 20 years he made a living knocking guys out with his patented elbow technique on the world's fighting stages. He's had some huge highs as an athlete, and also he's had some lows in his personal life as we all have. Today we're going to go meet him, hear his story, and hopefully, if I'm lucky, he might show me some of those patented elbow techniques. Come on inside. Hey, hey. Good morning, mate. Good morning. Good to Welcome. see you, bud. Thank you. Feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Ready to do it. That's great. That's great. You have been enjoying your life, sipping the syrup and the line in the way. Taking whatever you touch, the sword of the wicked is covered. The what got you into martial arts? in the beginning? I was in high school. Yeah. I think it was like, yeah, grade eight, so the first year of high school. Mm -hmm. And up till this point, I never thought about martial arts. And then I just had a confrontation with a friend at school one day. We ended up in a fight. I didn't like the feeling, you know, of someone hitting me and then not really knowing what I was doing. So I just said, that's it, that's never gonna happen to me again. I remember going home and saying to my dad, you know, dad, I need to learn how to box. And, and because this guy was a boxer. Mm. And he's like, nah, it's a mug's game. You're not gonna box. And, I didn't understand that at the time, what he was saying, but I was like, okay, and then, then um, yeah, then I ended up at a fine karate school. Going into a fight, did you, did you have that, that fear component? There was always fear. Mm -hmm. There was always adrenaline. There was always that sort of uncertainty. There was always that like, okay, you know, I'm, I know what I'm doing here. I'm going into like a, you know, a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. For me, like to be a warrior that I wanted to to, to live out, mm -hmm. you had to just walk through that to experience mm -hmm. it, to become it. And how old were you when you won your first world title? My first world title was 82 kilos. It was in 2003, so I believe I was around 24 years old. So in 2004, I had seven fights, seven wins, five knockouts. In 2005, I won three world titles in the same year in three different sanctioning bodies. After 2005 and 2006, seven, eight, nine, like all those years, I just kept fighting. I sometimes would actually put my title belt up because I wanted to defend my own belt, challenge myself, because um, I was, yeah, I was dominating a lot. What was the reason for going up into a different weight category? Was it just, was there more opportunity or more exposure? Or? In 2009, I had an opportunity to fight Tyrone Spong. He wanted to fight at 93 kilos. Won that fight and then I had to have two surgeries. I had two hips, hip arthroscopies, and I had my AC in my left shoulder shaved and my bursa cut out. So I was kind of out for a little bit. And then they got offered a world title fight, a heavyweight, 96 kilos, so I took it and then I won. Oh, so you basically went through all the... Yeah, so then, I was, then all of a sudden I was heavyweight world champ. What a way to make a living. Yeah. <laughs> so then I just went on and just kept doing more carnage with more elbows. And... Stalks forward again, hunting his prey. Into the body, into the elbow, into the body, elbow. Oh, the carnage opening up in the neutral corner. Was it John Wayne Parr or somebody dubbed you the man with the golden elbows? John Wayne Parr actually was the one that called me carnage. Mm -hmm. And I was training at his gym, but then I had my first elbow knockout world title fight mm -hmm. and I was winning with elbows leading up to that in other fights mm -hmm. and then that was in December January 2004 the kickbox international kickboxer magazine come out mm -hmm. and they wrote on the front cover the man with the golden elbows mm -hmm. even though the the ties obviously created Muay Thai I mean you you sort of pioneered a style of fighting you know, in your own way with, with the elbows. So was it just, was it like just an obsessive routine yeah. you had to have to, to For get elbows? There? Yeah. Strangely enough, not really. Like mm. it wasn't like I'd spend every single day, half an hour a day working on my elbow strike. It was mm. like, when I was 16 years old, I saw the ties fighting with elbows. I just started to learn Muay Thai and I was, teach, was taught elbows. And I was like, that my friend, that, that that's the weapon you want to be good at because like it just made sense, like the you know, elbow, the head, it's like it's it's major damage, you know, like it just use a baseball bat, boom, boom, boom. They locked down, trying for the body lock, short elbow, the carnage. A beauty, a beauty, got him just on the ear. I've seen some of your fights live and I've obviously watched all the highlights. Some of those finishes are so brutal that did you ever did you ever feel like guilty when you 
or, or have some remorse afterwards after just basically destroying <laughs> somebody. I often used to think when I was fighting, like if I killed someone, how would I feel? Mm. And, and I know it's hard to really give that an honest answer mm. because until that happens, you would never really know yeah. what that would feel like. But in my fighter time, in my main mind when I was fighting, I said, oh, I wouldn't care. Mm. In that situation. In yeah. The, yeah, but of course I probably would. <laughs> was there just times where you're like, Ugh, what am I doing? Or is this too hard on my body because of the level of um, damage that you're giving and taking while you're there? Yeah, there was lots of times um, where I was just, I don't think I can do this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, or I, my hands were so sore, I just like, I just lose confidence, you know, because I like, I've got to go in and fight these guys that have got nothing to think about but throwing hard punches. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking, oh, my hand's sore, I can't punch, I've got to hesitate. And other injuries, like, you know, just, it's hard to keep going, but then you're a prize fighter, you know, you fight for money. Mm -hmm. And it's what you do for a living, so you just keep going, you know. You've come to the 17 years of fighting. At, at what point did you start kind of feeling that your body was not, not given out on you, but like where you just knew that the signs were there, that there was a longevity, there was a, there was a, an end game to what you were doing. Everything I did was 100%. Training, sparring, weight training, fighting. Everything was done with like maximum force, maximum brutality. Nathan Corbett dominating, looking to go to win number 56 in his very decorated Muay Thai career. Well, a true, a true world champion, and he's defending the title here. And my sports doctor was always saying, when this is your last fight, you know, you know then I said, okay, just give me one more injection, and I'm gonna be, this is my last fight, I promise you. Just just fix me up for this fight. Like, it's like How many times did you say that? Oh, five <laughs> times. Yeah. You know, but when you don't have a plan B that you're thinking about doing, and you don't have anything else you've ever desired to do, mm. you hang on. Mm. You know? How did that affect you psychologically and identity-wise and everything? Oh, it was brutal. Mm. Absolutely brutal. Yeah. Yeah, when you, as a man, when you lose your purpose and you lose like your significance and you lose your income, mm. and then have to be in pain at the same time and try and deal with, you know, Re rehabilitating your body. It's just, uh, it's just, it's hell, it's hell. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's all I've ever known. It's all I've ever done. So from the age of like 14 to 34 and a half, 35, it was like one, 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 one mind, one path, one mindset, mm. one way. And then I had to be like, done. How did you cope with all that, with all that, the flip side of all that stimuli and that, that power and that, that training and then all of a sudden it was just gone? Like how did you, how did you manage that side? Because obviously you're very strong mentally. When I wasn't fighting anymore, one of the most hardest things for me was that I couldn't, no, I didn't, I never punched my way out of, into, out of my problems. Hmm. But in the metaphor is I couldn't, I wasn't the, the strongest you know, animal in the park, and I couldn't just walk in and go boom mm. and take my money and feel fulfilled mm. and feel secure and feel, you know, mm. I lost what I had as my power that kept me feeling safe in the world. How, how did you deal with that? So it's been like three and a half years since I fought. And like when I was finished, I was like, well, I need to like earn some money. So I'm like, okay, maybe we can do some seminars. Mm -hmm. Maybe people will be interested. I didn't know if they would. But in the first like few years of doing that, although it looked like I was living the dream, because I was like thinking that I was lost along the way doing it, because anxiety just makes you rush forward ahead of yourself to think, well, what am I gonna do when I can't fight anymore? What am I gonna do when I can't this anymore? What am I gonna see you know, like all these things that you know make your mind go crazy. So there was times where I'd be like, okay, well, I'll go do a meditation course, you know, mm. three days of that, try and do that. Still didn't do anything for me. 
you know, I'll go to a doctor, get some antidepressants, adding anxiety drugs, do that for a while. <laughs> that, that didn't do anything for me. Just kept like, you know, finding spiritual healers and then, you know, herbal healers and then uh, like going going to back to going to church and then like just like just trying to like find like fight, 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 fight for survival, like just trying to find that peace, trying to find that like that one thing that would just be like fix everything, you know? Mm. And now when I sit here today and I look back at that that path of like what I went through, I, I realised that firstly because I had depression, depressive suicidal thoughts throughout that time. Mm. And I think back to think, okay, well what made what was the separating factor between, you know, doing that act or and not doing that act was I realised that now looking back that I always was a fighter. Mm. I was always a warrior. The, the, the energy was still living inside me, but the mind was just completely lost. Mm. The energy of the warrior was still in me. So that's what kept me alive. That's what kept me, just kept me going, kept me fighting. It's like the whole cliche saying, "Never give up." Mm. You say it, hear that all the time. And it's so. It's like it's so true. Mm. You just can't give up. You just can't give up. And there's so many days, so many hours, so many seconds I wanted to give up. A lot of the things that you are incorporating into it now are not so much just learning how to smash someone with elbows, which is certainly a nice aspect of it, but you're now incorporating yoga. I'm just wondering how you, how you put that all together and what's your reasoning behind that? Is it because of what you've been through and, and knowing that you have to develop those sides, not just be so one, one dimensional? Or? Yeah, definitely like through the last three years of like, I guess you could say that a healing journey, I sort of realized that my actual, my kindness or my gentle side was actually one of my strengths. Mm. And yoga is a really gentle form of training or connecting with the body. Mm. And Muay Thai is a very powerful, strong form of connecting with the body. So I like the whole idea of putting them both together, together like a dance. The feminine and the masculine, the feminine and the masculine, the feminine and the masculine. So you're kind of offering that, yeah, that sort of that collective bit of, of both those aspects. Yeah. I think it's really, really unique and I think it'll, it'll, it carries a really good message. Yeah, and look, it's not for everyone. Mm. You know, not everyone wants to be a warrior. Mm. I mean, we all are in some way, because we're all here to you know, surviving and life isn't easy. So we're all, we're all fighters. Mm. Um, it's just the path that I went down and, and I'm on and that's my path. So I'm just teaching and inspiring from the path that I, that I walk. Mm. You retired at the top of your career because a lot of guys, unfortunately, they keep coming back for fights and it's like, yeah. you can see they're just, they're done. So, um, and I know we didn't touch on it a whole lot, but you've shared with us that going sort of through those depths of like despair and lack of identity and trying to find a purpose or a, a meaning to it all or some guidance. And so out of that, you've come with this whole sort of nice balance of, um, like you said, being being able to be strong, having that physicality and also nurturing that that sort of, uh, that nice gentle aspect of yourself as well. And yeah. being able to come full circle and share that with people that might be at an earlier stage of that journey and being able to yeah. present that. I and mean, that's really powerful, powerful stuff. We just think about Australia, Australia alone. Mm. There's no one in this country that's done what I've done mm. and doing what I'm doing. Because mm. the other thing is what I, when I finished fighting is that I realized that it was my mind that needed to be strong. Mm. Because my physical body couldn't be strong anymore to the level I wanted it to be. Mm. And I still struggle with that some days. But the mind has to be stronger than the body mm. because the body will always eventually decay. Mm. Yeah. I think the key part too is, you know, talking about, you know, struggling with depression and trying to find different ways, whether it's, you know, medicating or finding religion or, or something. And I think there's probably not a, well, a male or a female, but predominantly males especially that will not be exposed to that at some point in their life. Maybe not when they're 20 and everything's great, but as you get into your 30s and 40s and life happens and hormones change slightly, people will get affected by that. And like what you're saying too, is, is part of that is keeping a really strong, um, 
mind and trying to connect with things so that you can you can get through those because a lot of people wouldn't expect someone like yourself to have gone through that no. but you did and you went no. through it in a really heavy heavy way uh, no one would ever expect it you know, mm. because it's carnage yeah that's what i mean it really makes you find out who you really are like at the end of the day because yeah. you can we i guess everybody creates like a you know identity or an avatar of, of who you are and what your purpose is but if that's diminished in some way or if it's taken away yeah. through life i mean there's still the real you underneath all that and that's got to be reconciled at some point so yeah although i feel like i've wasted some years because i was in a place where i didn't enjoy it or as much as i should have enjoyed it it's kind of taught me so much put me on different paths and of seeking and searching that has maybe found certain things that I'm grateful for mm. in my life. When I thought I was lost, mm. I was actually on the path I was supposed to be on, which was the teacher, the leader, the warrior, inspiring people all around the world, you know? Well, I know we're only wearing street clothes, but maybe you can just show me a few, like without hitting me, but just, you know, a couple of the... Yeah, I can do that. Okay. No problem. But don't hit me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sweet. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Okay, uh, in the beginning, the, the rolling elbow is probably the best elbow, so downward right elbow as yep. we come from here. We bring the elbow up here yep. and we strike down, so the angle of it coming down is using the weight of the body, so yep. I'll hold the pad for you. Yep. So we're just going to get that elbow to come up. Yep. Okay, and we press down and strike into the pad. Another advance of this move is coming off the backhand. We're pushing through the middle mm -hmm. as I come here. I can split through the front of the guards. If yep. the guards up like that, I can split through and come up here. Mm. So we press that one back and we come in this way. Bam. Let's just try the left elbow as well. We come from here, mm -hmm. boom, we come straight up the middle. Okay. Bam. Yeah. Elbow strike. Bam. Elbow strike. So just right. poke this one in. Mm -hmm. Bam. One more strike. Bam. Good. Roll. Bam. And knock out. Uh, that's three effective elbows. One being the right down elbow. Right up elbow, mm -hmm. and then the left up elbow as well. And then that last one, which is that one. And yeah, that's the axe. Yep. <laughs> axe on top of that, so, yeah. All right. What do you reckon? I think I've mastered them. Mastered it? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well done, brother. Cheers. Thank you. Whew. Still got a bit of adrenaline going through my hands. You guys saw it too. Those elbows, man, that murderous look in his eyes. Imagine being across the ring from that and having to actually walk towards him. I'd be running the other direction. I just feel that with Nathan, it's so amazing the career that he had, but what I find even more amazing and what I have even more respect for is the fact that he's come on that down low from being this elite athlete with this amazing physical career and then having to basically forge a new identity when that's started to be stripped away from you in bits and pieces. And what he dug out of that, those moments of darkness, was that he had this immense mental strength and that mental strength got him to cultivate that gentle, sensitive side of himself to bring him together as a whole. I'm really grateful for his time today and for his honesty in sharing all these things. And I'm just, I was just blown away by everything. And it's given me a lot to think about. You getting stuck as he feet in the mud. You have been caught in the flood. <laughs> While the water isn't parted, we run, we put you so the harvest is us. <laughs> You have been enjoying life, sipping the syrup and a line in the white. Taking whatever you touch, the sword of the wicked is covered in blood. Welcome to the city of the nonsense, pleasure is the peace we can find in. Dive in, ride a shotgun alongside the